Is that Rossi on a comet? I think that is. <laughs> hey everyone, welcome to 110 Football. We'll be landing in the studio soon and have an amazing show for you today. Thanks for tuning in. I'm Connor Kolopsis. And I'm Jerry Reynoso. On this episode of 110, we'll recap Monday's match against Houston and break down this weekend's battle against our evil crosstown rivals, who will prank in a new skit. We'll also be introducing a new segment where we dissect the brain of Bob Bradley to understand the secrets to his success. This is 110 Football, LAFC versus Houston. And it starts... Engaging Warp Speed. Right now! It's kicking off in the world of football. From Boyle Heights to Koreatown and all through the 110 corridor. An LAFC fan show oh, that us? by two of their biggest fans. Oh. This is where true fans come to get their LAFC fix. So rally your crew, settle in. It's time for 110 football. Hello everyone, we are here at the ESPN Wide World of Sports Complex in Orlando, Florida. LAFC just tied Houston 3-3 in an absolute battle of a match. What are your thoughts on the game? Oh man, it was a fantastic comeback, but obviously in the first half there was jitters. There was rust, which we did expect. I mean, four months with no football, Bob Bradley and his crew did get a break. So you know what, that was expecting. But with the comeback, 3-3, three, three, down 3-1 three to one in the match, I think most of us were pretty content with grabbing a point at the end. I mean, like you said, there were a lot of first half jitters and rust, but but there are a lot of pros to come from this game. Bradley Wright Phillips, for example, got his first goal for the club in his first appearance. Brian Rodriguez got his first goal for the club as well. And then Diego Rossi scored again for the team. How good has he been this season? I mean, it's just Diego Rossi being Diego Rossi, especially uh, stepping up with Vela's absence. I think he has come up big, especially in this match and how important it was the first one. You have to get as much points as possible. And I'm looking forward to see what he can do against the Galaxy and Portland in the upcoming week. I mean, talking about shaky performances, what were your thoughts on Kenneth Vermeer today? Well, no doubt that was nothing less of a shaky performance. He did mess up a couple times. There was a couple times where he could have contested the ball, but he didn't. And those led to a couple goals and absences. But again, in the 70th minute, he did make a mistake in coming at the ball and also almost caused a penalty, which is a bit shaky and also could cost the game at the end. But if, if he could figure it out before next week's game, then I think he'll be good. And maybe if he doesn't, we'll have a replacement of public season to come in from, which isn't too bad to me. Like I said, there's a lot of pros and cons to come from this game, but I think there's a lot uh, to come from this game from LAFC. Yeah. Um, so yeah, Halle is finished refueling the back. We gotta head back to the studio uh, to finish filming the episode. So we'll see you guys there. Hey, did you change your shirt? Yeah, dude, the other one got burnt up when we were re-entering the atmosphere. Oh, yeah. Mine is nice and toasted like it just came out the dryer. Oh, hey, oh. guys, what a match and what a trip. I mean, I can't believe we made it back in time to film the show. Yeah, it is amazing how fast this little lady can go. Aw, oh, you flatter me, Jerry. Good grief. I'm telling you, bro, a desk ship beats a private jet any day of the week. Yeah, but you don't, you know, you don't gotta like flirt with it. It's a mutual connection, man. You don't understand. Right, well, you know, I'm glad you had your fun, but we are going back for Saturday's war against the LA Galaxy who just lost to the <laughs> Portland Timbers, dude. Yeah, they did. So here's a look at the Group F standings after the first tournament week. And here are the standings for all the other groups. And now, the 110 injury report. And now here's Eli with the top stories from around the league. Thanks, Connor. And now for your top stories this week in MLS. The MLS is back tournament kicked off last Wednesday with the first ever Florida rivalry match between host city Orlando and the newest expansion side Inter Miami. After a scoreless first half, Miami striker Juan Agudelo scored the first goal of the tournament in the 47th minute. However, Orlando clawed their way back into the match thanks to Portuguese star Nani, who assisted Chris Mueller's goal in the 70th minute, then later scored the match winner during stoppage time. If Orlando wants to go far into the tournament, they will need Nani to stay hot. 
On Thursday, in a very entertaining Group C clash, Bruce Arena's New England Revolution faced off against Thierry Henry's Montreal Impact. Most of the dangerous scoring chances came from New England, and specifically from Argentine forward Gustavo Bo. Bo shot the ball eight times and eventually scored the game's only goal in the 56th minute, navigating his way through traffic and lasering the ball from the edge of the box. Montreal Impact did almost tie the game with seconds left in stoppage time. However, Revs goalkeeper Matt Turner came in with a clutch save, keeping the match at 1-0. On to the match many people thought would be the Group D decider, Sporting Kansas City versus Minnesota United. Sporting Kansas City dominated possession out of the gate and scored just before halftime, thanks to Kyrie Shelton and poor goalkeeping from Tyler Miller. However, in the 74th minute, Things got ugly for Peter Vermees' side, as goalkeeper Tim Melia was sent off with a red card after denying Minnesota United striker Aaron Schoenfeld a clear goal-scoring chance. Things fell apart for Sporting after this as Kyrie Shelton scored an own goal in the 90th minute, and Kevin Molino scored again for the Loons with a minute left in stoppage time. Minnesota 2, Kansas City 1. And now for the Hell is Real Derby, the battle between Ohio clubs, FC Cincinnati, and the Columbus Crew. This was my match of the week, and it also featured my player and goal of the week. Archetime playmaker Lucas Elorayan, a club record signing, proved to be worth every penny for Columbus. In the 27th minute, the 28-year-old delivered an absolute screamer of a free kick. What a goal also, and what an obvious pick for my goal of the week. Zellerion also contributed an assist and a secondary assist to striker Jossie Zardes' two goals, which is why he is my player of the week. Columbus ended up winning the match 4-0 and are sure to be favorites to win the group. That's all for my MLS Weekly Report. Back to you guys. Thanks, Eli, for another great report. Yeah, totally. Hey, yo, Eli, you feeling more comfortable with us in your second week? For sure. I definitely had some first episode jitters, but I'm feeling way more comfortable now. Hallie was a big help. Come again? Yeah, I mean, dude, that makes sense. And Eli, remember your mantra. The galaxy has no power over me. The universe is strong within me. Bro, she's so beautiful, man. Mantra? Who knew a desk ship would know so much about transcendental meditation? Seriously, dog, what did you do to this desk? Like, the programming? Dude, it, she's just perfect, bro. Yeah, 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 totally. Um, Campbell probably did it as like a, you know, a practical joke. Good, good one, Campbell. You right, bro? Me? Yeah, you you yeah. you look a little shaken up. Yeah, no, no, I'm good. Let's just get into the moment of the game. All right, well, sounds good. And this week, it's an obvious choice. Blessing though, blessing able to keep it resetting. It's Brian Rodriguez who has his first goal for LAFC. Comeback complete. Wow, man, what a moment for Brian Rodriguez who can finally exhale after coming through for the squad in a very, very big way. Yeah, and it could have come at a better time, tying the game in the 69th minute. Ayo. <sighs> Bro, just grow up, nope. man. But I cannot wait to see a new confidence in him when he takes the field this Saturday against the Galaxy. Absolutely. So join us next Wednesday as we break down this weekend's match against the Evil Galaxy. El Trafico in Orlando begins Saturday, July 18th, with kickoff at 7.30 p.m. Pacific. Red Sox, Yankees, Curse of the Bambino, Lakers, Celtics, Ali, Frazier, th the Thrilla in Manila. What are you doing? Well, I'm just mentioning all these famous sports rivalries in their names. Ah, okay, all right. What about El Trafico? You mean the, the 110 Derby? No, I mean El Trafico. No, no, it's called the, the 110 Derby. El Trafico, that's what it's called. That's what everybody called it, El no, Trafico. No, 110 Derby. El Trafico. No, 110 Derby. El Trafico. It's the 110 Derby. El Trafico. 110 Derby. El Trafico. 110 Derby. Oh, it's El Trafico. 110 Derby. El Trafico. 110. El Trafico, also known as the 110 Derby. Out of this world! It's a rivalry between the two major league soccer clubs in Los Welcome Angeles. Welcome to Major League Soccer! El Tráfico, literally, the traffic in Espanol, refers to the notorious traffic in LA. The Los Angeles Football Club was established in 2014 and shared what is now known as Dignity Health Sports Park, where the Galaxy play. In 2018, LAFC built a new stadium and exposition park in the heart of LA. 
The two soccer clubs still share a city, but 12 miles of the 110 freeway has helped forge an intense rivalry. The first match between the two teams was played on March 31st, 2018. LAFC came out fast and drew first blood. Vela will score again for the black and gold, giving his squad a 2-0 lead. The Galaxy would help their new nemesis further with an own goal by defender Daniel Stedt. It's been that kind of a day. But despite LAFC leading 3-0 after 60 minutes, the Galaxy came back and tied it, sending their first match into overtime. The match ended in a 4-3 win for the Galaxy. The team's second meeting on July 26 ended in a 2-2 draw at the Bank of California Stadium. Six fans were arrested in clashes at the stadium where seats were damaged and fights broke out. The rivalry was already in full effect. The first El Trafico showdown played in the Audi MLS Cup playoffs lived up to the hype. Carlos Vela opened the scoring in the 16th minute following a turnover. Vela netted his second golazo in the 40th minute. But a minute later, Christian Pavan added the response for Galaxy for the first time finish inside the far the pole. Of the LA Derby. And just when it looked like history would repeat itself and the Galaxy would prove LAFC's undoing once more, Diego Rossi and Adama Diomande scored a pair of goals in a two minute span, restoring the lead and giving LAFC bragging rights. And now, El Trafico will play out in neutral territory in the arena at the ESPN Wide World of Sports Complex near Orlando, Florida. LAFC will be without their Golden Boot winner, Carlos Vela, who has scored in each of the six matches of the rivalry. But Bob Bradley's squad knows the stakes and will not hand over that winning momentum easily. Wow, that makes me even more excited for Saturday's match, but I'm still nervous that we're facing our greatest rival without our best player, the league's best player. I mean, Bella is our Jedi master, but even Luke Skywalker had an Obi-Wan and a Yoda. True, and for LAFC, that role belongs to head coach Bob Bradley. In this new 110 segment, Jerry and I will put on our lab coats and dissect a classic play from the coach to better understand that beautiful brain for his beautiful game. Oh, you're so corny, bro, I don't know why. LAFC allowed their opponents only 37 goals in 2019. That's an incredible plus 48 goal differential, which led MLS. So what were the defensive strategies devised by Coach Bob Bradley that created this success? One of the core pieces of Bradley's tactics is to block the passing lanes and create spaces in the center of the pitch. This forces the opposing team to either lose possession of the ball or switch their offensive attack to the wing side. Bradley uses his 32-52 lineup and a 4-4-2 formation with a lone central defensive midfielder positioned deeper, which, as you see here, makes a block of four into a block of three behind the two forward line. Notice that Diego Rossi has dropped from his forward positioning to be a part of that midfield line. This modified 4-4-2 is Bradley's calling card. Yes, but the risk being that they'll expose holes in their defensive formation if the play occurs in the center of the field and his squad is pulled in. But as you can see here, Bradley smartly has his lone defensive midfielder sit near the defense. This prevents LAFC from being exposed where they're most vulnerable to attack, forcing the opposition to switch over to the wings. This tactic is effective as LAFC faced 9.85 shots against, with the league average being 16.54 shots. Overall, LAFC faced only four shots on target per game compared to the MLS average of 6.8 in 2019. And we've already seen Bradley's defense pick up from where they left off this season. 100%. And that's it for the first edition of Triple B. I expect to see the classic Bradley formations in full effect this Saturday, but I bet there will be some new tricks up his sleeve. Agreed. We need to be creative and expand our mind to all the possibilities, especially when facing the greatest darkness. Well, it's weird. Which bring us to the keys to the match against the galaxy. 
I'll go first since I'm the smartest. <laughs> Dude, chill. You play the genius on TV, but this is an art imitating life. I mean, you don't gotta be like mean about it. Don't force it. Instead of forcing passes into congested areas, the black and gold need to be measured and patient. By making the galaxy chase, LAFC can find extra pass time and exhaust their rivals, despite emotions being at a peak. I agree that the galaxy will be in the prowl for mistakes and opportunities to attack an unbalanced LAFC. Yes, don't give those opportunities by forcing the ball into areas when an extra pass might open bigger windows. Which brings me to my key to the match. Save at least one. With LAFC looking to take the match to the Galaxy, there's a high likelihood that one golden opportunity will fall to the opponent. At that moment, whether it's the first minute or the 90th minute, LAFC needs someone to step up. And that someone is probably going to be a goalkeeper. One big save could turn the tide of this game in LAFC's favor. You don't want to count on it, but when the moment arrives, you simply have to have it. Nice one. And then the final key to the match, the one that counts, win. That's it? To just win? Yep. <laughs> well, that's not a key, that's just like, you know, obvious. Well, sometimes the key that unlocks the door is the one that's already open. I mean, <laughs> it makes sense. No, it doesn't. That does not make sense. So wait, you made yours the number one key? With LAFC facing their greatest threat and most hated opponent, and with both the season and the rep of the city on the line, we need to win and make sure we win, and definitely don't lose. Well, not the way, you know, I would have put it, but you know, you're right. So sometimes you need to, you know, dance with the devil and, you know, flirt with death. <laughs> Why you gotta be so dramatic, bro? So, we went to the one person in the 110 family well versed in sabotage and general mayhem, and she devised a devilish plan to help our boys in Orlando this weekend. All right, this thing's on. Yep, this is the place. Easy peasy. All right. Nothing here. Nah. <laughs> Jonathan Dos Santos, okay. Javier Hernandez, yep. Chicharito, that's a long phone number. Yeah, we got it, woo! Peter, you see? Oh, okay, I got an idea for that one. Ah, oh, yep. <laughs> Beat that galaxy. Got it. Of course you roped in Omar to do your dirty work. I don't like getting my hands dirty. <laughs> that, that's cold. <laughs> I mean, they did say, by any means necessary. Okay. He'll probably be home, but I doubt he'll pick up because this is an unknown number. Let's see. Como esta? Como esta, Cristian? Este es Jorge Ameal. Presidente de Boca Juniors. ¿Cómo está, señor presidente? Estoy muy sorprendido de saber de ti. ¿Cómo puedo ayudarte? So, if I may speak frankly, you need to break your loan with Galaxy and come home. Boca Juniors need you. Pero, I'm on a loan. I just leave my Galaxy teammate. Don't you care about your country, Christian? Sí, of course, presidente. I, 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 I read that it was your childhood dream of yours to be a three-sport athlete. Well, yes, pero... What if I told you that you wouldn't just be returning to football? I don't understand what you are... We also need you to play for the Boca Junior professional basketball and volleyball teams. Are you serious, señor presidente? You are Argentine's son. We are proud of you, Christian. But what I say next is much important. Grab a pen and paper and write this number down. Okay, go ahead. A one A five 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 one one zero zero. This is the number to Eric Valles, LA Galaxy Director of Human Resources. You need to let him know that you must leave the team right away. Comprende? Of course, Presidente. My country comes first. Godspeed, Christian. We will see you soon. Good luck. Gracias, señor presidente. I won't let you 
or Argentina down. You better not. Oh! oh. Why would you say that? I'm sorry, I got... <laughs> Dude, sound like he took the bait. Yeah. All right, he should be like calling in three, two... What do I do? I, you're Mr. Velez. Okay. <clears throat> yeah, it was good. Mm, hello? Is it the office of Eric Velez? Uh, yeah, this better be fast, because I'm busy with um, soccer stuff. Hi, uh, yes, uh, this is Christian Pavon. I'm currently... Yeah, on yeah, yeah, I know who you are. What do you want? Uh, this is very difficult for me to say, but I must leave California immediately and return to my country of Argentina. Uh, if you're asking us to give you back a week before we play our biggest enemy, then I will surely hope you leave the galaxy, the solar system, and the entire universe. This is a matter of national importance. This is much bigger than a simple LA rivalry. All right, first off, I'm going to pretend you didn't just say that. And B, I can't stand a grown man groveling. <laughs> don't, don't cry to me, Argentina. The truth is, you never left him. You were just on loan, so your chapter is approved. Yes, yes, Miss Venice. You don't know how much this means to me and my country. Yeah, yeah, listen carefully, jerk. You're now dead to the galaxy. Muerto. No calls to teammates, coaches, staff, the stadium parking tent, not even the true lady across the street. No. You make us do this, and you no longer exist. Yes, yes. Senor Eric, gracias. Whatever, safe travels, moron. That was priceless. <laughs> I don't know how I did that, but I feel dirty. I hope it's worth it if Pavon doesn't make it to the match on Saturday. Dude, fingers crossed. <sighs> What'd you guys think? I think. Oh, crazy. I pulled it off. Leaving. Did it? Bye-bye. <laughs> <laughs>